this lecture came about by a lot of people keep asking me which way, which software and which uh, website should I keep my genealogy on. So I want to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly of recording your genealogy on the web. And I also want to go over a little bit about organizing your genealogy research because it's real easy to get hung in a loop of just getting on and just browsing and doing a few things in research. So we want to talk a little bit about all of those. Um, so first I'm going to go over why you'd want to post your genealogy online and then where would I put it and then this good, the good, bad, and ugly of several sites. Uh, now these are not the only sites that you can post. They're just the most popular and the ones that I have the most experience with. So we have Ancestry.com and they're the big gorilla in the room. They're the ones that so heavily advertised everywhere. FamilySearch.org and if you don't know about FamilySearch.org you need to. Uh, that is funded by the LDS Church and uh, it is completely free and has access to all of the records they have digitized and eventually all the microfilm will be digitized and indexed. It's going to take probably another four or five years to do that, maybe even more. Of course they keep acquiring new records so FamilySearch.org is, um, is definitely a gem out there. MyHeritage.com is a kind of the new person on the block they just recently acquired Janai.com and um, so they have some features that I'd like to talk about a little bit too. And Wikitree.com. Now Wikitree, um, if you don't know what a wiki is, it is a way on, on the web where you can all can contribute to the same uh, information. So Wikipedia for instance, everybody can edit the articles that are on Wikipedia. Well, you can, everybody can edit on Wikitree and you can upload your, your tree. It's a little harder to use than some of the commercial websites. It is free. So I'm just going to be covering highlights. Uh, your, mi your mileage may vary because your experience level will vary. Then I'm going to talk about the shaky leaf syndrome. Uh, that's doing whatever research comes along and how to change that and really go into a little bit more formal research methodology so that you can organize what you're doing. So why keep your genealogy online? The best reason is for finding relatives and getting hints on your research. All of the websites are starting to progress toward being able to have the servers at, the, at night when you're not on they're actually going out there on the records and trying to match your genealogy so they can give you some hints and where to go looking and so and you've got lots of opportunities for finding relatives yes I got them through emails and and I got them through I found relatives through uh, back on when we first started ads in magazines and other ways but this is certainly the most productive is to be able to get people to see your tree, realize their cousins, and contact you with email and uh, continue help you continue with your research. Also, uh, we're beginning to be in the era of DNA tests. The um, using DNA tests for both the um, mitochondrial, which is mother, and the Y DNA for males, and the Family Finder test is the uh, test that you can use for cousins in between and those are getting to be fairly accurate and very popular and so with these online sites you'll be able to match not only your DNA test but then your family tree so you can verify those tests and I've used those successfully in several tough research problems recently. You also want to use a uh, your genealogy online to share photographs and documents without having to send them in private email or without having to actually physically go and copy photographs. And finally, it's a way of backing up your research. The uh, keeping your genealogy online means if somebody steals your computer, if you have a fire, you have a flood, there's someplace else that that research exists. And FamilySearch.org especially is 
because it's free and because the LDS people are are running the site, they archive those websites heavily and they're guarded heavily. So they um, they make a, a big point out of making sure that everything that's on the on those websites is recoverable. And uh, so they are definitely backing up your research. So we'll talk some about each one of these sites. Ancestry.com, they've been in busy, they've been in business for um, 32 years, very busy company. They keep acquiring new things, but it's been a major website for 16 years. They started in the publishing industry first. FamilySearch.org is free. It, the, genealogi the Utah Genealogical Society was founded in 1894, and they are the, the, the arm of the, the nonprofit arm of the LDS Church that go out into the field and microfilm records. And then later it evolved into developing this major website about 16 years ago. And FamilySearch.org is got to be one of the biggest websites, probably second only to um, Ancestry.com, and uh, very heavily used. MyHeritage.com is partially free. It, they let you get on for free, but there is a limit to the number of people you can put in your tree. I, I believe the number was around a little over 200. I think it was 240. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay about 10 bucks a month to store your information there. Um, the big advantage is they have acquired Janai.com, which was a Facebook app. And a lot of my younger cousins, my the next generation cousins, are all on Facebook. And so shortly after I got on and started being active on Facebook with other genealogists, I soon discovered that they were putting up genealogy and genai.com, and a lot of it was wrong. And so I definitely had to go participate, whether I liked it or not, so that I could keep things from being uh, put in the, in the application wrong. But now genai.com and familylink.com is part of the MyHeritage site. And the big advantage with MyHeritage being 10 bucks a month is they also acquired some kind of uh, rights to be able to go to newspaperarchive.com. And newspaperarchive.com, I have a membership there. It costs me $200 a year, $99 every six months. And when they, now that I found out that myheritage.com has access to it, I'm about ready to drop my membership in newspaperarchive.com and get to it from MyHeritage. It is a, an extensive online access to newspapers. I have found more little tidbits on my ancestors through newspaperarchive.com. Um, but you can't get to it from myheritage.com until you pay the money. Uh, you can get on, do free, and, and actually do the index and see if it has anything there. But when you go click on it to try to see the newspaper, you have to be a pay uh, customer to do that. Uh, Wikitree.com is absolutely free. It's been around for seven years. Uh, it is a website only, has no other records, whereas and MyHeritage.com is only access to records from other sites. It is not, they don't have any records at their site. Uh, FamilySearch.org has records and Ancestry has an extensive set of database records. Both of those do. For geeks that want to post your own, um, if you have software, you can export a GEDCOM file. GEDCOM is kind of like um, when you're in Excel, instead of exchanging an Excel file with somebody else, you can output it in .csv, uh, which is a common delimited file. Well, GEDCOM is a text file that's exported out of Family Tree Maker, Roots Magic, Legacy, and if you um, get a GEDCOM file, you can right click on the GEDCOM file and open it in Notepad. Now, if you double click on GEDCOM and you've got something like Family Tree Maker installed, it's going to pop up Family Tree Maker. So you've got to right click and then select your software. But if you get in there, it looks kind of ugly. Um, it is a flattened representation of your tree, but you can see all your information there. It is a text file, so it is can it can be changed and and altered and fixed if there's problems with it. Um, you take that and you import it into a program to convert it to HTML and HTML is the markup language that's used on the web 
and JED2X and JED2Web, or two of them, go to cindyslist.com. If you don't know about Cindy's List, it is a pointer to all the other websites on the web on the internet having to do with genealogy. And it is a place to start when you can't find anything. Uh, Google is going to point you to a lot of commercial sites, whereas Cindy's List, she actually has a genealogist. She's going to organize it. And so it's a good starting place for anything you're trying to find, like finding a program to convert to HTML. Uh, you can pay, place your HTML uh, on Roots Web or other websites at hosting companies. I don't recommend this for non-techies or anybody that doesn't know about hosting and webs and HTML. So I would skip that and go to one of these commercial sites. So let's talk specifically about the good, bad, and ugly of each one of these sites. Now, I'm only hitting the highlights, and there's no way I can cover all of the details having to do with, with these sites. But I want to tell you some of the features. I want to tell you some of the gotchas that I found. The excellent part of Ancestry is they're just a ton of databases and record images. So you can find both indexes and record images. It can be a little confusing at times because you have both indexes and record images, but there are lots of databases. There is no limit to your online tree, and you can have multiple trees. You can keep living people private. I can put up a tree and make the whole tree private. It will tell somebody that I, they have a match to my tree, and, you, and then they can send me email. So you can keep trees private. I don't recommend it because that's the way you find new cousins is to have your tree public. The uh, living people keep those private, but don't uh, you know don't keep your entire tree private, or you're not going to get any matches from people. The trees are yours, meaning that it isn't shared. You match information and you merge it into your tree, but nobody else can edit your tree unless you give that permission to somebody. Um, the DNA tests done at Ancestry.com are also tied to the trees. However, they are, you know, they're commercial, and we don't know whether or not they're either going to get in or out of some of these things having to do with DNA tests. Um, so use it for what it is and uh, realize that it may go away completely sometime. Uh, you want to sync if you want to automatically update your tree from your desktop to Ancestry.com. Family Tree Maker is their software and that will do it. We'll, t we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. It is a place you can store photos and you can store stories up there. But other people will have access to those. The bad part of Ancestry.com is these matches to the other trees. Uh, when you do a search on Ancestry, keep looking at records rather than other trees. Yes, you can get hints from other trees, but the if you keep matching to other trees, you're going to find people that don't know what they're doing and sometimes merge the wrong people. It can lead to entire trees of information matched to others that with nothing. If I go look at the sources on their trees and see where they've got their information, they got it from another person rather than some record they've made a conclusion about. So it it can have a problem as well as help with your research. The footnotes that um, Ancestry use, I think, can be way too generic. Um, if they have a database and you look at the footnote having to the explanation having to do with the database, you will see that sometimes they say, records from 1692 to 1920. And what you find out is they have one volume that's 1692 to 1776, and then they have the rest of it from 1900. So sometimes their footnotes kind of lump things together, and you're not real sure exactly what records are there. Um, others can add your photographs and documents to their tree, unless you've kept that stuff private. And that's fine as long as you realize that your photographs are going to end up on somebody else's. I have shared a few photographs of my, uh, my 
grandparents that are so that are real far back. They're four generations back in the tree. They're the oldest photographs I have, and I have put them up there so other people can have them because they potentially have thousands of descendants now, and I'd, I'd like to share. Um, like everything else, I kind of expect the cost will continue to rise. It is not necessarily a cheap website. I think it was 199 the last time, or 149. Out, you have to look to see, and they will offer you a discount the first time you get in there. Or if you go to a major computer conference, you may find that you have a discount there. Always go up to their booth if you're even if you're a subscriber and say I want the discount to renew, and they will usually give it to you on the uh, at the conferences. Now the ugly part. This is the tough part. I have accidentally gotten two fathers and two mothers merged together so that, um, for instance, my mother was married uh, twice and her first husband died in an um, uh, airplane crash in uh, California during World War II. And for some reason or another, all of a sudden I've got, I had him listed as my father, which it, it, he wasn't, and uh, you know, so there were two fathers and two mothers in this family relationship, and it took me quite a while to figure out how to back out, how to get rid of those relationships without bleeding information. So um, work at it very carefully, and um, but it will, if you end up merging two people together, make sure you've got the right people. Um, I have also experienced the family tree maker software getting wedged and what I mean by wedged is it would say I can't sync to your online tree and I I tried everything under the sun I did not want to de delete my tree on fam on uh, ancestry I had to call customer support and for somebody that's been in the computer business for 20 30 years it's unusual for me to have to call customer support and they finally talked me through how to delete the file so that I could re-download what's online into my family tree maker. So just be careful and watch when it does do the syncing to make sure that it's really doing what it's supposed to do. And now this is my favorite site, FamilySearch.org, and the reason is because of the quality of the the software uh, and the the quality of the uh, the databases that are online at Family Search. There are a lots and lots of databases. They've also digitized a lot of books, and they point to those books. Uh, what I think BYU is actually the one doing the in digitizing of the books. But if they've digitized your book, when you search for it in their catalog. It will point to there and then you can go looking at the pages and download just a few pages or print just a few pages that you need. Um, there is no limit to the size of your online tree, no charge for it. You can have multiple trees. Uh, living people are kept private and even so it goes so far as even if I found a record with my name on it, um, it won't it won't let me add it to my my or it won't let me uh, uh, do searching on records for me, and so it, it they they want to make sure that your living people are kept private and that you don't tie them to some of the records and stuff. Now I manually was able to put the records in, but they're going to a lot of links to make sure that it's private. Um, you can make entire trees private, any level of privacy uh, on their site. You will have to log in. You will have to get an account. Um, it does not cost anything for the account. You just have to go register. And that's why, because they are very picky about knowing who is going to update their trees. And so they have to have some kind of an identification so that when you make an update to a tree, it's labeled. Um, you can sync to uh, Roots Magic software, and I believe Legacy, and there are probably several others. Uh, there is a nice place for photos and stories, and the footnotes are excellent. Uh, it is not likely to change. It will continue to be free. The bad thing is, um, 
here again, you can merge trees without much effort and, mad, and merge information in, and it can lead to having a lot of bad information out there. So use what you have out there with a little bit of a grain of salt. The other bad part is the tree that you're creating out there is shared with others. If you have a cousin that disagrees with your information, they can go out there and change it. Now you will see in the footnote and you'll see in the notes that this other person changed it. Um, there are arbiters that are looking at all the changes on the tree, but I have found that you still can get invalid data put out there. And if that person continues to disagree with you, they can keep swapping it and you can keep correcting it and they can swap it back and forth. So some people do not like using this because they can get into disagreements with people about what pieces of information there are. But just document what it is you don't disagree about and there are places there, put notes and uh, just leave it and go on. You know, that person's just convinced they're, they're right. But uh, if you do document why you think they, yours is there, it will stay. The comments will stay. Um, others can add your photographs and documents to their tree also. It's, I don't say that that's bad, bad, but um, just be aware that if you make your, pub your photograph public, um, then it's going to be available for everybody. Now the ugly part of FamilySearch.com is when you do get those relationship pointers messed up, just like on um, Ancestry, it was hard to back out and un undo the merging of two people. Uh, merging two people gives them four parent relationships, for instance, the same way as what I got into on Ancestry.com. Just be careful. And I was able to get it undone. Uh, and it was a little easier on Family Search than it was on Ancestry, but it is still easy to merge people when you shouldn't. Um, Roots Magic also can get wedged so that the sync doesn't work, um, but they also have support. Uh, I have managed to get it wet. I, since I'm a software person, I managed to break anything that I touch. So. Uh, it's not unusual for me to break things because I'm I'm pushing the bounds of whatever's going on. You may never have a problem. My husband's never had a problem with his roots magic, so uh, I always manage to do something. Now, my heritage and Janai, uh, Janai.com is now owned by my heritage. This fantastic agreement with NewspaperArchive.com makes it of interest to me. I really wasn't all that interested in there. Some of their tree tools are a little awkward sometimes. They have good citations and they are spending money and expanding their, their influence. They are making agreements constantly. They seem to be the new kid on the block and they are going to make their, they are, they are bound and determined. I see more activity from my heritage than I do on ancestry and acquiring new records or new access to records. Uh, my heritage doesn't have any records, they just get access to records. Um, no records repository, so they don't really keep records. Um, I didn't find any way to do research notes, and it costs $9.95 a month, which isn't too bad, but and you're paying to have your, basically have your uh, genealogy backed up. The ugly part is, um, because of Janai, you, it can be tied to Facebook stuff, and it's um, it's not done by accident. You've got to uh, let them do that from Facebook, but um, some people are not familiar with with being on Facebook and how to how to uh, do it. So go through it. Go through this website from MyHeritage rather than from Janai.com and you'll be more aware of when people are given access to records and uh, your, your tree. Um, no notes cost, you know, $9.95 a month. So now we've talked a little bit about these websites. Are there any questions? I haven't seen any come across in the chat room. And
okay, if you come up with questions, I'll stop and ask them. Um, <clears throat> I'll stop and try to answer them. Um, because I'm going to be starting to uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about how to use these sites a little bit more efficiently. Um, which software can take linking G DNA? Um, the, the way you link DNA is through, I think Roots Magic might and, Le and Legacy might, um, but there is more independent software that you can download the raw files. For instance, uh, Family Tree DNA is the biggest and the oldest, and most of the people that are real serious use Family Tree DNA first. Then they'll pay for the Ancestry.com uh, DNA, and we um, take those raw files and your GEDCOM and upload them to GEDmatch. And uh, so Ancestry, the combination of a DNA file and your tree on an Ancestry or the DNA tests and upload it to GED match with your with your GEDCOM file is usually how you link the two. Um, if you're just wanting to archive it, I think several of the web just to look. I'm I don't remember about Family Tree Maker about whether you can record the results of uh, your DNA in that software. It's real easy with these online sites to get into what's been referred to by a couple of people as the shaky leaf syndrome. As you probably know from all of the advertising that's on TV, Ancestry puts these little leaves up on your tree and they appear, they appear to be shaking to get your attention so that um, you know that you have other matches that they want you to go look at. The problem is that's the computer leading you. And um, it's real easy to get, you know, I'll be sitting there watching TV and I'll go off and start doing, just following the shaky leaves. And before I know it, I'm down in the weeds and I went, wait a minute, what am I doing here? How am I doing this and why am I doing it? And so it's real easy to get lost in your research. Or if you've just started your research and you've gotten as much stuff as you can find online and all of a sudden you start trying to get um, uh, further along, this methodology that we're, I'm going to talk about might be able to help you a little bit more. So on Ancestry, this is what the uh, shaky leaves look like. They're little tiny leaves off of uh, people's names and uh, you click on them and it brings up information that you've got to go research. On um, MyHeritage, it's coming up more like this where it's a list and um, it ends up with, uh, it'll say, you know, on Janai there are 246 matches. On Family Search, now see, MyHeritage is actually going out to Family Search also. And it's going out to Wikitree and searching also. And then it also is accessing some of the other census records and other things. I just clipped the top part of this page. So it, it is wanting you to click on their little um, blue but box there and it will take you over to that other site to see the pending matches and uh, look at what's going on there. And on Janai, it shows up by little tiny circles. See the little blue circles up by these people's names. And then you click on that and follow it to find out what kind of matches they have. On um, FamilySearch.org, you can uh, actually do a search on, or it shows record hints, I should say, with this little brown box that looks like a computer with a little, with a, um, a magnifying glass. And if you click on it, it brings up the hints that it's trying to show you. So uh, FamilySearch.org is showing here that, that I have a 1930 census and a 40 census and a marriage that it found. And uh, this is uh, my ex-husband's 
uncle. And so um, uh, I haven't done a whole lot of work, and there are a lot of hints there. And so it's saying I found potential matches. Notice that the bottom one says Clay Galloway. And without researching that carefully, you may, that may not be the right person, or it may be a missed a misindex to the 1900 census. So you'll probably want to examine that. And note that you know a couple of them say Claude J, and other ones say Claude. And then uh, in the de in the death records it says Jackson Claude. Well, that might not be the same person also, uh, but it is trying to at least give you hints. And they're pretty good. Uh, FamilySearch.org is high quality hints. It's uh, it's more record hints than it is matching other trees. Whereas Ancestry, a lot of the matches are matching other people's trees, which I don't find of a whole lot of value. Uh, I every once in a while I'll go look at the other trees, but in general I don't even bother. Uh, most of the other trees are copies of my tra my work anyway, so it it's just not useful. So. Um, I, I prefer to get the uh, record hints here off of Family Search or a record, um, a specific record. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's talk a little bit more about um, research methodology. Uh, professionals use what they call the genealogical proof standard. And um, you can go over to the bcgcertification.org, which is the board for um, certification of genealogists, and go through what they call, why they, they call this the uh, genealogical proof standard. In summary, here's the steps. They, you, if you get hire a professional, don't get a professional that just does a record lookup, do a professional that's going to follow these steps. They're going to do a reasonably exhaustive search. They're going to do a complete and accurate citation of all their sources. They're going to analyze and correlate all the information. And that means stopping and looking at the information. Resol and then try to do some kind of resolution on conflicting evidence. We all have conflicting evidence. The, you, you, it's extremely rare for you to have all the records that you find all be consistent because there were misspellings and ages didn't get exactly right in the census, etc. And then um, doing a soundly reasoned, coherently written conclusion. And this is where even my even I fall down some. I don't write up a conclusion near as often as I should. Uh, but this is what the, a professional should do for you if you hired a professional. So how do we apply that to online searches? Think about focusing your search. And I, I can show you a little bit about it. I won't be able to go in depth on any one of these, these uh, sites, but how to focus your search. Then make sure you've recorded your citations and your research somehow. And then when you finish doing the research or your work for a session, take time to brainstorm, what do I want to look at next? And uh, I always try to think about, well, what do I want to try to do next with this person that I have done? Now, how do you focus your search? On Ancestry.com, you can go to the button at the top of the menu there. It says search. And the pull down box is, looks like what's stuck in the upper right hand corner of this slide. There is a card catalog at the bottom, meaning it's an index of all of their databases, just like the old library card catalogs. And uh, you can bring up the card catalog and do a search through a specific one or look on the bottom left there and you can see filter by collection. You can pick and do a search only by census records, only by birth, marriage, and death records, only by military records. So pick a category and do the search. So this narrows the information a little bit so that you're not just getting all the public member trees on Ancestry. On FamilySearch.org, the way to focus your search is in the menu at the top. There is a search button. 
and under the search it says records, genealogy, catalog, books, and the wiki. Now the wiki is the area where you would learn about other things. They even have some recorded presentations from some of the professionals and seminars that you would see at a conference that you can get to off of the research wiki. There will be information about records and um, and so then there is a catalog that will access all of the books and all of the microfilm that's at the family search. And then there are also genealogies, which are those digitized books, and then there are records. Uh, John in the chat room is making a, a comment. He's a consultant at a family history center. They're open, free to the public. Um, if you want or get stuck on something on FamilySearch.org, definitely go to your family history center. And they also will provide free access to Ancestry.com at a family history center. Uh, on, fam on FamilySearch.org, you can search the wiki or uh, for uh, fam LDS Family History Center and find one near, near where you are. Um, I was at my Family History Center last Wednesday night just getting a microfilm that where um, some marriage records had not been um, indexed yet and uh, so I had to go get one and I ordered in the microfilm. You can also order the microfilm online and have it delivered at the Family History Center so you don't even have to go over there to do the ordering of the microfilm now. And if you order the microfish, they will stay at the Family History Center. So uh, FamilySearch.org is definitely in cahoots with the Family History Centers and definitely it is a resource that to have another person if you get stuck on, family, on FamilySearch.org, they will, if they don't know the answer, they will try to find somebody to get you the answer. Uh, if you post a question out on the wiki, out in the um, blog, and, and ask questions, somebody will try to answer the questions. Uh, I, the professionals, uh, the kind of questions we go ask is, is this source such and such? Or they will actually go hunt down and look at this, you know, get somebody that knows something about the sources, and they will tell you um, about all of the information. So they are very good about giving the technical information about all of their um, records. So um, you can research by location and it brings up a map and you can click on the on the location and go down. Uh, first you click on the United States and then a state and then a local county and you can do it that way or you can do a search in the catalog for a specific location, specific names. You can search by names locations and by uh, types of records. So I can do a search by any one of those three things in the library catalog. Um, the kind of things that will come up are uh, databases. I, I just clipped a piece of a page here uh, just to show you that um, what it returned on my search was an Iowa State Census. It has a little camera next to it. A camera next to it means that there are digital images online. I do not have to go order the microfilm anymore to the state the Iowa State Census. It's all online and all been. And uh, just because it shows the little camera with images does not necessarily mean it's indexed. So um, you have to click on it and go see is this something that's indexed yet. Uh, they are madly doing the indexing. I do indexing while I'm sitting there watching TV. And um, um, so uh, the find, find the ones with the little cameras if you're wanting images. Uh, Mike asked me about the free access to Ancestry versus um, the FamilySearch.org, which you would not get from a paid membership. Uh, the free access, I, I'm not sure if you can put your own tree up from the free access. I have not gone to it. Maybe John can answer that question for you. Um, the paid membership, of course, you're getting, uh, being able to do your um, comparisons and other things. So um, I think they just, the, um, it's kind of access to the, to the searches that you can do on on the air, but uh, maybe John will come up with this while we're talking here. <clears throat>
on Ancestry, um, when you record, you want to try to record what research you've done so that you know what you've done and how to go about finding more. This is the hardest part, even for me, to keep track of. How, what have I searched and do I need to go back? Uh, what, you know, what things have I recorded? Ancestry has a little thing called a shoebox. It's off your home part of your page. And um, you, when you find a record, it'll ask you, it says, do you want to save to your shoebox? And so you can actually save a pointer to the record in your shoebox. And so you see some here where I have uh, saved my grandfather, William Wade Renfro's World War I draft record. Um, I saved a, um, a non-population schedule census that probably was a manufacturing census. And um, the, if you've never come across these non-population schedules before, these are a recent act, um, put, you know, a, a recent addition to um, Ancestry.com, and it's real valuable to, to be able to look at the manufacturing and the agricultural censuses. Um, so this lets me keep these pointers around, so that helps sometimes. But I have this huge list of records that I have done, and. Uh, so I, but I, on Ancestry, I can, down here, add alternate information. I use that place, even though it's asking for alternate information, you can also use it to keep notes. Uh, note the source citation and the source information. It's pretty extensive. It tells you where it found it, what the census year was, uh, what, you know, what the description of the database is. So when I put this record in a shoebox, I can find out all that dead, that information so that I can then uh, put it in my software. And uh, then you also can click on the view and it'll bring up the image. So that's useful. On Family Search, they have what they call the source box, which is kind of the same. Um, it's pointers to that. Uh, you're not able to make notes like I could on Ancestry, but the advantage on FamilySearch.org is I can create folders. And so, um, as you'll see on the bottom left, I have put a, um, uh, made a, like a Coulter folder, and everybody with that surname, I have stored all their records in that folder. So that helps to organize those records just a little bit more. Um, so this is what a source box entry looks like on FamilySearch.org. Um, you, you might see a match to Find a Grave, which is another website that uh, FamilySearch has gotten their index and they point to it. As you notice, see the citation is very extensive. It actually points to the individual image and it adds the uh, comment that it was accessed the 1st of May 2015. And uh, so I like that. It already puts that real, comp you know, a, an extensive citation there uh, when I save that into the source box for me. Um, on Janai, you can look at lists. That'll help focus uh, specific searches. Uh, you can search by photos. You can look at your uh, maps. Uh, you can look at some statistics on your tree. So um, <clears throat> you are able to keep a little bit. In, I wanted to mention just briefly here, there are some softwares that will let you record your research tasks even better. And Roots Magic, Family Tree Maker, The Master Genealogist, and um, some others. And I'll show you how that can happen. Now you can do this in Word, and I know a lot of people that do it in Word or in Excel. But here's a research log, and I've got a date of my search, uh, what I was trying to find, what source did I check, where did I check it, and in this case, I went to the LDS Church uh, Family History Center in Richardson, Texas, and went to the IGI and pulled the microfish and found um, Hiram Kirkpatrick's and, you know, listed with his wife and some of the kids. And so I have kept notes there as to what I did and what order I did it in. 
uh, like I say, do this in a in a in a Word document or an Excel document if you don't have like Roots Magic where I can do a research log. The other way to keep the information that I've seen people do is to keep a timeline. Now, if you have your um, software like Family Tree Maker or Roots Magic, it automatically generates a timeline of all the records. But that helps you look at, oh, I've got a record of Robert Kirkpatrick in 1813. Well, wait a minute. That can't possibly be this Robert Kirkpatrick because he died in 1803. And so the timelines are useful for keeping all of the records, for seeing their migration patterns. Um, I have a 1770 record there showing it was in Guilford County, North Carolina, where he signed a petition to open uh, Deep River for fishing. So timelines are a real good way of organizing all that research material also. Yeah. So Jerry, we're back to... Mind you, we're running out of time here. Yeah, I'm summarizing right here. Thank you. Uh, so the uh, this is the four sites that I mentioned. Uh, Ancestry, FamilySearch.org, MyHeritage.com, and Wikitree.com. And um, if you're just getting started, I would recommend go to FamilySearch.org. And because you can get help from the uh, people that do help with the FamilySearch.org, or you can go to a local family history center. And uh, John points out you can bring a flash drive with you so that you can take the copies of those images home with you. And um, and they will also help help you set up a family tree on FamilySearch.org, so you can uh, be editing your information on FamilySearch.org, and then you can go home and add to it. Um, they they don't have access. To what he says is confirms what I thought. Ancestry.com it basically gives you a search thing, but it doesn't really give you access to your own tree. You need your own account if you're going to put a tree on family on Ancestry.com. But if you're wanting to search the records that are out there that are different from FamilySearch.org, then um, you can go there to the Family History Center. So if there are any other questions, hopefully this will give you a start and decide, oh, I'm going to go here first and try this and try to focus your research uh, searches just a little bit more so that you don't get caught up in the shaky leaf syndrome. And good luck with all your research because uh, it's a lot of fun.